Hey there, what's up? I'm Latasha James, and this is Social Media Management for Beginners. Today, I am showing you a real life proposal that I actually sent to someone, and I'm gonna make it a little better. Spoiler alert, it was a rejected proposal, but I just sent through an accepted proposal that went really, really well and was a really big contract for me. So I'm gonna actually use what I learned from this proposal and apply it to a proposal that I sent out several years ago. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of context, I sent over this initial field proposal after a discovery call. So I had already met with a client and got an understanding of what he was really looking to do, of what some of his goals were, what some accounts were that he liked. And from there, I then crafted a proposal based off of our conversation. So just to give you a little idea of how it all fits together, I have anonymized some of this just to protect his company name and all of that stuff. But this is what it looked like. I had a picture of him. He was kind of a personal brand. Like you could think Gary V, you know, that kind of thing. He wanted to make a name for himself in the kind of career coaching world. And so I put a picture of him. I think these colors are his actual brand colors. So I went ahead and used those to personalize the proposal. And that's the front page. So on the next page, I just have an objective here. We want to cultivate an inspiring, empowering community for those looking to take charge of their careers, establish the brand as a destination for content and reach target audience through social media engagement, content creation, and relationship building. So real quick, I said a whole lot of words there and used some of my biggest, most impressive sounding words, but I didn't really say anything. Simplification is not a weakness. It is a strength. So sometimes when we go into proposals or we go into boardrooms, we feel like we have to like say all the fanciest things, but really you can just say like, we're looking to become a leader in this space. We're going to do it through really cool content. I'll show you, of course, the revised version in a minute, but that's my first comment. Okay, so it looks like I listed out a bunch of different services that I was gonna provide him. So channel setup, provide recommendation for social channel platforms that align with the brand, optimize existing social channels with photos, profile sections, and bios, set up and launch desired channels that have not yet been created, and identify channel KPIs and report on progress each month. So this is fine. I think those are all things. Those are all important. But honestly, all of these things should really be included in a social media management package in most cases. I mean, we should definitely be measuring KPIs. We should be optimizing the social channels. Like, I don't really know that that is all super necessary to list out as if it's like we're doing them this huge favor or something. I don't know. Then we talk about channel strategy. We just have some stock photos here, identify target audience, create content pillars, develop brand tone voice, content calendar, and establish posting frequency. I guess that's okay. I think maybe if he is brand new and doesn't have any of these things, then perhaps this would be an additional package in addition to just normal social media management. Sometimes we get kind of thrown into doing some of that brand work just because they don't have any of that stuff developed. So it, it is good that I listed it out here as a separate service if that was indeed the case, if he had no brand ID and things like that. Content creation, schedule social posts according to content strategy and schedule, create videos and images for social, assist with podcast cutdowns, waveforms, and guest artwork, provide feedback and suggestions to greater team based on online conversations and industry trends. So here's the part that I really kind of have an issue with. <laughs> assist with podcast cut downs, talk to the team, who even is the team, you know, there it's very loose. And I could definitely see one, the potential client getting confused and, and not really having like a tangible deliverable that he's understanding he's getting from me, which spoiler alert, he said no, or just ghosted me. So like, that's probably what happened. But if he would have said yes, and wanted to work with me, I could also see that getting very much abused. So assist with podcast cut downs, give me a number, like give me a strategy there. How am I assisting? Am I doing the full production of these cut downs? Am I identifying timestamps? that an editor should cut down right in consulting hours for that then, you know, why is it just this loose, like I'll give you ideas sometimes. Maybe it's either I will give you a monthly report or a monthly, you know, strategy recommendation or a monthly strategy call, something like that, like be specific both for you and for them. Community management, monitor social inboxes, respond to inquiries, engage with influencers, cultivate community and assist with 
coordinating online and offline events as needed. So this one is okay until that last bullet point. Same thing there, like what is assisting with online and offline events? Am I gonna be traveling to these events? I think this person maybe lived in New York City. Like was I planning to go there and do event management? That's a completely different service that is not social media management. So that last point definitely should be fleshed out, but the rest looks okay. And then that's it. Thank you for comments or questions. Here's my email address. All right, so that was pretty mediocre. Let me know in the comments, would you say yes to that proposal? Because I honestly wouldn't, and I wrote the thing. So let's go over to the new proposal that I wrote. And the first thing I want to say about this updated proposal is that I would actually be presenting this proposal to them, just like I'm about to share it with you. I recently started presenting my proposals over Vidyard, just recording like a quick screen share, just like this, and sending over to the client. And I just feel like it makes them closer to you. You know, it's just much more engaging to listen to. You can kind of explain some of those areas where maybe they are a little bit vague. You can sort of explain it in your own voice. It's more fun to read. And it's so easy for a client to get a proposal and see a number, like scroll all the way to the end, look at the number and be like, Ooh, that's higher than we imagined. That's more than we, you know, initially wanted. Let's just say no. But taking that 10, 15 minutes to actually sort of develop a relationship with you, listen to you, really increases your odds. So here we go. First of all, I simplified it. I added my branding in here. I just, this is just aesthetic, you know, look and feel stuff. Doesn't really matter quite as much, but I think it looks a little bit more polished than that initial hello page. And we kind of didn't need that like creepy PNG cutout of the guy's face. I, I, I don't think that was really necessary. So on the first page here, I have our primary goal listed. So I really just recycled what was already said. We want to cultivate an inspiring, empowering community for those looking to take charge of their careers. We're going to establish the brand as a destination for content through engaging social media posts and ultimately increase sales of brands, courses, and events. So that was the big thing that was missing from the first version is I didn't really talk about what impact this you know, destination for content was going to have on the business. That's all good and great if we're just like generating engagement and being the talk of the town, but how are we going to actually make this guy money? So that part should be made very apparent, very clear what the tie to revenue is, what the ultimate business goal is. And putting it up front really is going to help your client see or your prospective client see that you mean business. You're not just here to make pretty pictures. You want to help increase their bottom line. Now, of course, we know that social alone can't do that, right? We need the web team to be doing what they need to be doing. We need product team to be doing what they're doing as well. But we can definitely do what we can do and control what we can control on the social team to hopefully, you know, send people to the website and make those sales come in. Okay, so here's a proposed strategy or a channel strategy. Instead of just kind of saying, I'm gonna help you decide on your strategy, I'm gonna identify channels that you should be on, blah, blah, blah. I just went ahead and did it in the proposal. Now, of course, a social media strategy and anyone who's taking the social media management toolbox or the social media management accelerator course that I run, you know that a strategy document is more than just this one page. But this is just kind of like a bite-sized version of the full strategy that I will create for him. So I'm letting him know, hey, we're going to focus on LinkedIn because it's a career-focused content platform and we already have an existing audience there. So let's continue leveraging that audience. We're also going to want to keep top of mind for the existing audience that we already have on Instagram. And then TikTok is a new up-and-coming platform and it's super easy to repurpose content that we're creating for the podcast, for Instagram reels, for even short form LinkedIn onto TikTok. So let's throw that in there because we're also targeting people new into the workforce, Gen Z, who is on TikTok a lot. So again, I'm just giving him a taste of the full strategy that I would be delivering him instead of just saying like, we're going to think about the channels, like tell me which channels. I think sometimes we get afraid that people are just going to take our proposal and go implement everything themselves. And it's like, honestly, when that happens, a lot of times they end up coming back. Telling someone which social channels they are supposed to be on is not a full strategy and they're not gonna get the same results as they would if they were actually working with you. And two, like that's a lot of work. Looking at those three platforms right here, I mean, that's a lot of work and there's a reason that they reached out to you. So operate from that abundance mindset, not that scarcity mindset of, oh, they're gonna steal my ideas and go implement without me. 
So then I gave just a quick sample of a content strategy. We're going to take this existing weekly podcast and blow it out into three short form pieces of content, you know, one medium ish piece of content for LinkedIn or, or whatever. And I just used my own content as an example. Of course, if you had a client that was very similar to the one that you're proposing to, which I guess mine pretty much is, again, he was kind of like a career coach, you know, a personal brand. So this does definitely work showing, you know, how I transitioned the long form to the short form. And then I'm also adding in that we're going to do two weekly trending reels and TikToks and LinkedIn updates as well, just to make sure that it's just not all repurposed content. I think something else I could probably do here could also add some results here for either one of these pages. You know, I mean, you do see the view count for the YouTube video, but if I could show the number of TikTok views or comments that this got, or maybe the number of website clicks that came over from any of these posts or just any type of data here would be really helpful to just to kind of sweeten the deal and show like, I know how to do this. I, I want to do it for you. I also added in here some brand inspiration, just a couple of sort of thought leaders or content creators that I thought were doing a really good job of this sort of repurposed podcast idea. I may make this a little bit more detailed and prettier if I was actually presenting this to a client, maybe giving a few more examples maybe showing some examples of like some trending content because I mentioned that. Um, but sometimes that can be hard for people to conceptualize. But overall, like just show a little mood board, give them a taste, show, don't just tell, give them a taste of what they're going to get. And then here I talk about what we'll measure. So again, remember how on that earlier presentation, I was like, yeah, we're going to choose KPIs. Like, okay, what are they? Like, don't just tell me you're going to think about the KPIs show me what the KPIs are. So I said that our primary goals are engagement and conversion driven. We're also adding a timeline in here, as you can see. So for months one to three, we'll be primarily focused on driving engagement to our content, measuring reach, impressions, and total engagement. So there are three metrics right there that we can pay attention to and that they know they're going to be getting a report on. And hopefully all of those numbers will be going up. That's reach, impressions, and engagements. And then I said from months three and beyond, we'll measure goal completion completions, meaning event and course sales, as well as overall clicks to our website. So again, two more KPIs there that we're letting them know we can measure. And as I'm presenting this to him, I would be explaining to him why we're going to focus on engagement first and then conversion second. And again, anyone who's taken the accelerator kind of has gotten an understanding of why I say this, it takes time to be able to start selling to people. You don't just walk into somebody's house and start trying to sell them things. You need to build a relationship first and strengthen your relationship with your existing audience. So I would be explaining that to him on the presentation or on the call as well of why it's kind of um, built out that way. And sometimes people get scared about this. They're like, well, I just want to explain to them that they're going to make a bunch of money from social media on day one. And sure, you're probably going to see things go up pretty quickly if you're doing your job, but I would rather under promise over deliver and really set the expectation. You don't want your client to be working with you for two weeks and be like, why am I not getting a ton of sales from Instagram yet? So set the stage, explain to them the importance of building that foundation first so that nobody's disappointed and they're not like out shopping for a new social media manager the next day. Then I just kind of hyped myself up a little bit. Why me? So I shared a testimonial from one of my past clients. And then I also explained some places that my work has been seen on. Now, I wouldn't necessarily put that kind of a thing in a picture like that for every single client. The reason I chose this for this client is because from what I remember of our conversation, press was really important to him. And like I said, he kind of wanted to be that like Gary V, like motivational, like get on stages like that kind of guy. So I wanted to explain to him that I not only have been featured in those publications, but I also have relationships with reporters at those publications and, you know, just kind of hype up that side of me a little bit so he can again see himself in that position. And then I go into the deliverables. So I had like three different slides of deliverables. I just feel like that was a lot. That detailed breakdown could probably be included in the contract when we go ahead to sign off on things, just so we have that legally binding document that explains what exactly they're paying for. But for this proposal, I'm just really going to explain, hey, I'm going to manage your content calendar and schedule at least three posts per week per platform. I'm going to do full production of three video snippets from each podcast 
license to use. So that's something I always like to include in the proposal. If I'm going to be doing work for hire, which means I'm going to be creating content and they get to keep it, they get to reuse it, post it on any other platforms, do what they want to do with it. That can be a huge value add. So I always like to call that out. It also includes 90 minutes of strategy and meeting time each month, as well as a hundred dollars in ad spend. So again, instead of just saying like, oh, I can give you some ideas sometimes, I'm actually going to slot it in and say, hey, you get 90 minutes of strategy time if you want it. And then I also added the investment on the next page. So I just made this number up, but I would say maybe this package would be $2,500 per month with a six month contract. I always like to call that out so nobody's surprised. I usually try to sign clients for three to six months at a time. And then something else I always like to add into my proposals and my contracts is an out of scope rate. So I gave you that total investment, but hey, if you want help with like on-site events or email management or any of the other things that I know how to do, we can do that at an additional hourly rate. So I like to add that in there pending my availability just for those situations that do come up. This has really helped with scope creep. I have a video about that that I'll share. And then I just added in some next steps. Hey, here's what I'll need to get started. I'll need a signed contract. I'll need a completed onboarding form and a first month's deposit. Then we'll get your onboarding call scheduled so we can handle passwords and you know get all the information that we need from one another. And when I send this proposal over, what I would do is I would probably load it up into HoneyBook, which is my client management system of choice. I would load this up into there, queue up the first invoice and contract so that they, if they're ready to get started, they can just sign it and take care of that right away. So we can just keep the project moving along. Remember, you want to make this as easy and seamless for your clients as possible. So just send as much at once as you can, that makes sense, you know, without being overwhelming, but make it flow really nicely. It should be super easy and seamless. All right. I hope this episode was helpful. If it was, be sure to subscribe. I'm going to be back on Friday with a new episode. And I thank you so much for watching. Hope this was helpful and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.